The 296 GTB is the sound of revolution at Ferrari. The Berlinetta Gran Turismo, as you probably heard, marks the return of the V6 engine, now turbocharged and electrified. And I'm here in Andalusia to find out if the 296 GTB will become the segment's new standard. Let's find out. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. Let's first consider the new design of the 296 GTB because its small size makes it seem playful even when it's not moving. At the same time, this design is very thoughtful. From a functional perspective, it's unmistakably a Ferrari, though it has somewhat redefined the concept of a rear-wheel drive mid-engine Berlinetta. The way the A-pillar of the passenger compartment blends so smoothly into the tapered front really stands out, along with the single large grille and the opening in the center that features a racing-inspired carbon fin clearly developed from Formula One. Looking at the rear end of the 296 GTB, Ferrari wanted to show off a vintage connection on the tail with how it stylistically and functionally calls back to the legendary 250 LM. In profile, you can hardly see the cut of the B-pillar, but for me, the best angle of this Berlinetta is from the rear three quarters where you get the full effect of those phenomenal rear wheel arches. They not only reference past Ferraris and how they're styled, but functionally, they channel the air directly into the engine's intercoolers through those two massive air intakes. The star of this car is its engine, which the vehicle's name reveals is 2.9 litres in displacement and has six cylinders, hence 296. Ferrari first used a V6 engine in 1957 in its Dino 156 race car. That first V6 had a 65 degree configuration, and then the V6 continued to flourish at Ferrari in all sorts of cars. On the road with the Dino, as well as on the track with numerous sports cars and single seaters, not to mention rally cars thanks to the Lancia Stratos. And today, the V6 has returned in the 296, though the architecture has changed, opening the V6 all the way up to 120 degrees to fit the two turbochargers inside its V. When you open the engine cover at the rear, you're no longer greeted by the classic red-painted intake manifolds because they're buried under the mechanics of the engine. But there are reasons to break with tradition. Less weight, lower center of gravity, and improved efficiency of the engine's intake and exhaust ducts. 660 of the GTB's 830 horsepower comes from its V6 engine alone. Its power per litre ratio of 221 horsepower per litre nearly setting a world record. It helps that its two monoscroll turbos can rotate at 180,000 revolutions per minute and deliver thrust linearly with no gaps at all. The electric part of the engine's story is sandwiched between the V6 and the gearbox, which ultimately required a lot of effort on the part of the Ferrari engineers, because unlike the SF90, which is all-wheel drive, the 296 GTB is purely rear-wheel drive, as we found mightily fun on the test track. Well, here we are near Mont Blanc, and what a day for visibility. The livability of this GT has really won us over, as has the sound. Ferrari's technicians no doubt spent many late nights and lost a lot of sleep to get this V6 sounding this good. And you know what? They succeeded.
As I mentioned, the cylinder banks are set very wide at 180 degrees, which makes the engine short in height and allows it to be installed lower to the ground, decreasing the car's center of gravity and enhancing the type of handling for which Ferraris are famous. And we're feeling it now as we've moved from public roads to the hot laps. On just the second lap of this circuit, already hitting 175 miles an hour on the straight. And it's here we're suddenly thankful for all of the 296 GTP's aerodynamics, as well as its active aero, like the spoiler that automatically extends from the rear bumper and generates a load of nearly 800 pounds when set to its maximum downforce mode. Let's also look at the newly named E Manettino drive modes, the highest of which is called Qualify, where the electric motor is offering its maximum performance and there are specific steering calibrations that work with the EPS and Ferrari's slip-slide control system. The next drive mode down, in this mode, traction control is off, but the E-diff is very highly communicative. The quality driving mode verges on perfection for what it permits and still communicates, but at the same time enhancing the skill of the driver, allowing you to grow in confidence, in effectiveness as you drive this vehicle, and ultimately having more fun. Oh man, look, this car is phenomenal. In hairpin turns like these, really phenomenal. I don't know if you've noticed, but here we're driving with stability control turned off. And bringing a lot of speed into the corner, the car has, at the rear, really started to step out a bit, as if it were losing grip. But the steering's level of control and feedback is just impeccable. And the new ABS Evo brakes really allow you to attack any corner, as if you were trying to make the pass of your life on the last lap. Alright, so maybe exaggerating a little bit here, but the control is truly pinpoint accurate this very advanced new braking system, which uses 15.7-inch carbon ceramics, the discs up front, makes its debut on the 296 GTB, and it takes advantage of data coming from the new six-axis chassis dynamic sensor, in addition to the grip estimation device integrated all within the electronic power steering. On the world's most extreme racetracks, this system can handle you braking mid-corner, which is a very rare ability for any road car, and this is only one of the many components that helps you realize the full potential of the 296 GTB, even when you're making some minor errors that would cause any other sports car to start to stumble hard. All right, let's take advantage of this cool-down lap to consider again the drive modes. In terms of power, each mode is roughly equivalent to the others, while the range of buffers and, and helpers has been specifically calibrated for each. In addition, the Assetto Firano package adds even more performance calibrations, as well as hardware like uh, titanium springs. Their damping is different from that of the standard 296 GTB. And maybe the ride suffers a little bit more for it, but we're really talking about such a minimal change that perhaps only a very professional racing driver could feel the difference. The Assetto Fiorano setup also compensates for the slight 60% rear weight bias in this vehicle with its special front spoiler. That adds another 22 pounds of force to improve the balance. The MGU K2 electric motor deserves a few words after having demonstrated how far it's raised the performance of the 296 GTB. Of those magical 830 horses mentioned above, 167 or rather 122 kilowatts come from the electric motor, which is powered by a high voltage battery down low in the floor of the car. That holds 7.45 kilowatt hours of power. The electric motor's power boost reaches the rear wheels only, and that's a first for a Ferrari plug-in hybrid, as the SF90 is all-wheel drive. The two cars do share a transmission. It's an eight-speed DCT. The differences between the two are many. The electric range is less than 16 miles, but the magic of the 296 occurs in how it transitions from gas to electric. It's very fast and fluid, a difficult challenge considering that the front axle doesn't even cooperate, a difficult thing to achieve considering the front axle isn't involved. The 296 GTB always starts in either E-Drive or hybrid mode, except in very, very low temperatures. And if by chance you are wondering how long the battery lasts and how much power is lost when the battery is fully depleted, well, here's the answer. The difference between the qualifying and performance modes is the target for the battery state of charge. Quali 
qualifying aims to get everything you can from the battery, and performance aims to extract power consistently and for as long as possible. The two modes often work similarly, in fact the same in some cases, but at their most divergent point the maximum gap is around 40 horsepower. So now abandoning the track in favor of the road, we're using the hybrid drive mode right now. And as trivial as it is to praise in these conditions, it's superb and should amaze even those who would have done well, nothing with an electric Ferrari before now. Driving conservatively, it's possible to move entirely under electric power at any time. We covered several kilometers inside the city this way, vastly improving fuel consumption and how weird it is to pass through a city silently in any Ferrari. The only noise you hear being the, the jaws of passers-by as they drop. On the other hand, when the road comes alive, even the hissing of the turbos, that sound enters the cockpit, especially if you change the drive modes to performance and race, which together one or the other can tackle any rough asphalt. Each of them is truly a phenomenal setup. I'm pretty sure that with the SF90 Stradale, I wouldn't have had as much fun as on these roads at the same time and be as relaxed as I am driving the 296 GTB. Those dimensions, it must be said, really count. Just five centimeters less length than even the F8 Tributo, both in wheelbase and length, make the GTB very agile on the road. And this is one quality of the 296 GTB that we'd like to emphasize the most. On the track, it feels very sharp, dynamically, but it's on the road where it feels even more tailored to the needs of you, the driver, and perhaps this is also why, unlike the SF90, if we were ordering the 296 GTB today, probably say no to the Assetto Fiorano package in favor of the standard versions. Total enjoyment, total flexibility. It's fast, it's fun to drive in any condition, whether you're on a track day or a country jog, thanks to the perfect marriage of electricity and handling. Truly phenomenal and lightning fast, even in addition to its compact size, the 296 GTB's weight also plays an important role. The lightest configuration is the Assetto Fiorano that weighs 3,240 pounds. That's still very close to the weight of the standard car we're driving today on the road now thanks to its short overhangs and low center of gravity that enhance its precision and usability. It has definitely bewitched us today. Let's go back to talking about the sound, fundamental to the design of this engine, which has cost Ferrari's engineers so much effort. Compared to track use, the Assetto Fiorano package, where the car is wailing here on the road at a more gentle pace, the melody, it's different. The V6 soundtrack is more complete with a full-bodied and metallic sound. It's so interesting to take in and then it eggs you on for more. Perfection does not exist, but this new Ferrari comes very, very close. And if the rear weight bias distribution has got to be studied best to impress when driving this car from inside, the GTB is a technological show. It's the same as any latest creation from Maranello. You've got the big screen in front of the driver and a smaller one dedicated to the passenger. It's a pity though. I don't like the usability of these modern Ferrari steering wheels, which is perhaps influenced by a love of past Ferrari steering wheels. and just their simplicity. It's time to talk about the price of the Ferrari 296 GTB. It starts from 269,000 euros, about 300,000 US dollars, while the Assetto Fiorano package starts from 302,000 euros or 332,000 US dollars. Options excluded, of course. We imagine this car might be supposed to replace the F8 Tributo, but after driving the new 296 GTB, the differences between those two cars are actually striking, and much of the difference in a good way, can be credited to the 296 GTB's engine. Ferrari has efficiently welcomed back the V6 and married it with electrification in a wonderful way. Its compactness makes this extraordinary Berlinetta enjoyable, utterly drivable, and it opens a new and very interesting chapter in the history of Ferrari.